Having the ability to jump onto literally any computer from anywhere in the world and have access to not just all of your projects, but all of your project media as well without even leaving DaVinci Resolve. All for about the same price as this sweet cream cold brew. What are we talking about? It is of course the Blackmagic Cloud. It's great for solo editors like me that are always on the go, but if you do want to start working with others, you can at no extra cost. So I'm going to talk you through it. I'll talk you through some of the details, show you how to create an account and demonstrate how it all works within DaVinci Resolve itself. Now, before we actually truly get started, I just need to explain one thing real quick. Project libraries and project media. This is the first thing you see when you open up DaVinci Resolve. This is your project manager. On the left, we've got project libraries. And unless you've created a new one, you'll just see the one called local database. Within this project library are all of your DaVinci Resolve projects. Project library, all of your projects sit within that project library and that generally sits locally on your computer. And then within those individual projects, you've got your project media. These are your videos, images, music, audio, whatever that you add onto your timeline and then cut up to actually create your video. So you've got project libraries with the actual projects themselves, but that doesn't contain the media. And then you've got your actual media files like your images and your videos. Now that's important to note because Blackmagic Cloud allows you to either upload both of these to the cloud or you can just do the projects themselves, in which case you'll have to have the media with you on like an SSD or whatever else. Make sense? Cool. Now the next thing you need to do is to actually create a Blackmagic Cloud account. So let's do that. So you'll need to head to apps.cloud.blackmagicdesign.com and I have put a link for that down in the description below. Or alternatively, if you just go to literally any of the Blackmagic websites like the blackmagicdesign.com homepage, in the top right hand corner there is a little login box. If you give that a click, that will take you directly to this login page and then you can get started from here. So the first thing you'll need to do is to create a free account. So give that a click and then populate your details as required and then click sign up. You'll receive an email, click the big button within the email and then you can get logged in. Once you're logged in, you'll be taken to this screen. This is the Blackmagic Cloud homepage. Now, the first thing we need to do is to create one of those project libraries. To do that, we click on project server. And at this point, it will say we need to upgrade our plan. So simply hit upgrade and you'll be taken to this screen where we get to decide how much we actually need. Now there are two different ways to do this. Essentially, you can either add more storage, which will also get you a project library, or you can just add an additional project library. I highly recommend you just get the 500 gig because it's just way better value for money. Let me show you. So by default, you get two gigabytes of cloud storage and no project libraries, and that's when you're on this free account. Now what we could do is add one project library, which comes to £4.50 per month. But that's one project library with only two gig of storage. If I knock my project library down to zero and then just slide my storage space up to 500 gig, now I'm gonna get 500 gigabytes of cloud storage, but that also includes one project library. And that's priced at £6.50 per month. So for that extra two pounds, you might as well have the 500 gig because that includes one project library anyway. 500 gig, that's never gonna be enough. Trust me, it probably is. So I recommend that you go with 500 gig for now and you can always go back and increase that if you need to. Why do I think that will be enough? Well, because DaVinci Resolve will actually create proxies by default and then it only uploads the proxies rather than the camera originals. So that 500 gig, actually goes much further than you think. I actually did some maths for you. So I did an 11.3 gigabyte camera original, compressed that down into a proxy format and it came out at 518 megabytes, which means 500 gig of cloud storage is the same as 11 terabytes of original uncompressed camera original originals. <laughs> Once you're all paid up with your plan, you should be taken back to this Blackmagic Cloud homepage 
and then we just need to jump back into the project server once again. Now this time round, it's just going to ask us to create our first project library. So I'm going to give this a name, we'll just call this demo, and then we can choose our region. I'm obviously in Europe, London, and then we can choose the version. So unless you're on a really old version, for whatever reason, you're going to want to leave this as 18.1 or above, and then click add then it's gonna create your first project library. Right, we're all set up, so now we just need to jump into DaVinci Resolve and we can start creating our projects and uploading all of our stuff to the cloud. So let's jump into it and have a look. So here we are in DaVinci Resolve, the same DaVinci Resolve you always open. And in the very top left, you'll see local, network, and cloud. So we're just gonna click on cloud and you'll be taken to this screen. Then we simply need to log in with our new Blackmagic Cloud account. Now we're in Blackmagic Cloud. You can see I've got my initials in the top right hand corner. If we give that a click, we can log out if we ever need to. We can also jump directly to that Blackmagic Cloud homepage by clicking on this Blackmagic Cloud button in the bottom left. Here you can see Blackmagic Cloud and we've got our project library. If you added more than one project library, you'd see all of those here. Now this looks exactly like any other DaVinci Resolve project manager. And if you want to create a new project, you simply click new project in the bottom right hand corner. But this will look a little bit different. It says, do you want to create a new cloud project? First things first, we need to name it. So let's just call this one demo one. Then it will say, choose a location for your project media. This is for your imported media files, graphics and audio files. So this can seem a little bit confusing at first. You don't need to point this to your actual media of the project that you're going to create. This is just saying, if I download any media from the cloud that maybe you uploaded earlier on or whatever, where is that going to be stored? So generally, I just leave this where it is, unless you want this to be set on an external drive or some other location, then you can change it if you need to. Number three, share projects with multiple users. You can either set this project to single user or allow multiple simultaneous users. You can change this on the fly after you've created your project. So for now, I'm going to leave it as set project to single user. Then we've got synchronized storage with Blackmagic Cloud. So these are the media files we spoke about earlier. You've got three options. Don't sync any media. This is useful if you have got your media on an SSD and you're just gonna take that with you instead. You've got sync proxies only, where it will create proxies of your original media and just upload those, which is really useful because it saves loads and loads of space and makes that 500 gig go much further. Or you can choose to sync your proxies and originals. Again, this can be changed later. I generally leave this as sync proxies only. And then number five, allow remote camera access. Allow remote cameras to see this project and to load media directly into the DaVinci Media Pool. This is a really cool feature which we're not going to drill into too much in this video. But if you're using the Blackmagic camera app on your phone or an iPad or whatever, you can be out making videos on your phone. Your phone will automatically create proxies which will be uploaded to this cloud project. And then if you've got an editor sat somewhere else, anywhere else in the world, they will see those files coming up automatically. So you don't need to wait till you get home and upload them or anything like that. Your phone will do all the work from the field. It's really neat. But as I say, we're not going to drill into that too much. <laughs> so then you simply need to hit create to create this project. And then you're in. This will look exactly like the usual DaVinci Resolve you're used to seeing with one small exception. In the bottom right hand corner, you have this little cloud icon. If you give that a click, you get this black magic cloud sync pop up will appear. So you can see we've got my name, we've got my 500 gig, and it shows how much is available, all the media I'm using, local syncs, remaining, and all that sort of stuff. We've also got this icon here to pause any syncs. We can click this icon to enable and disable our multi-user collaboration. This toggles our camera capture, and then we can open our folder in Finder or Explorer. And then if we click on this little gear icon here, this will open up the settings. So we can change that project media location if we need to. We can allow multiple users. We can change whether we're syncing media, proxies or proxies and originals. So I actually made a video all about proxies on the channel not too long ago. And generally with Resolve, you have to create your proxies manually, either by right clicking on your clips within the media pool 
or you use the Blackmagic proxy generator. When you're creating and making projects with the Blackmagic Cloud, you don't have to because there is this option to generate your proxies automatically, which is really handy. So I recommend that we keep that ticked and then you can choose the format of your proxies. I'm just gonna leave mine as H.264. Then we can simply hit save or in my case, cancel. And then we can start to make our project as we usually would. So I'm just going to import some media. And as soon as we add any media, if we click on a little icon once again, you can see it's gonna start generating proxies for us. So it's automatically creating these proxies on the fly, and it will also automatically upload them to our Blackmagic Cloud. We can also keep track of the status within our media pool. If we make this a bit bigger, you should see your Cloud Sync folder. We can see this one's queued, this one's been done, this one is now uploading, this one is generating proxies. And you can continue to work, you can do all of the things you need to do while those proxies are being generated. And that is all done. Now remember I said that that 500 gig will go pretty far. This is 26 minutes of H.264 10-bit 422 4K footage and the original media, 32 gig. After creating my proxies, I'm taking up 1.1 gig of my 500 gig. So I could do about 500 projects of this size for my 500 gigabytes. So as mentioned, it's plenty. Then you just edit this project in exactly the same way that you usually would. Simple, but how does it work from the other point of view when you need to grab your laptop, go traveling and access that project from the cloud? Well, I'm currently in a hotel room on the other side of the world with a laptop that doesn't currently have that project. So let's open it up and I'll show you. So you can see we've got the same projects here, demo one. So we're just gonna double click to open this up. Then we're gonna get a very similar prompt to before. We can choose a location for your project media. So as it downloads these proxies, where do we want them to go? I'll leave this as the default. And then we can choose the files. Don't sync any media, sync the proxies, or sync the proxies and the originals, providing the originals were sent up to the cloud in the first place. So we just want to sync the proxies only. So then we're gonna hit open. Then once we're in this project, we've got a little icon in the bottom right hand corner. If we give that a click, we can see exactly what it's doing. And as you can see, it's syncing all of our files. So it's downloading our proxies off the internet. Now I'm not on the best Wi-Fi, so this is gonna take a little bit of time. So we'll come back in a second when this has done its thing. And that's all done. So now we can see all of our clips within our media pool. We can grab all of those and put them on our timeline. And then we can just start making any changes, cutting up this timeline using those proxy files we downloaded. And as soon as we get home and reopen this project, anything we've done will be there ready to go. Now it's also worth mentioning real quick that because I don't have the camera originals, I cannot render this project out in its full resolution on the road. I'd have to wait until I got home to do that. However, if I wanted to render this out in a pinch, I could generate the video using the proxy media instead. Now, one other super useful thing, you do need the internet to be able to access this cloud panel. But if you know that you're going to be going somewhere without the internet and you need to be able to access your project, all you need to do, find your project within the project manager screen here. And this icon is a copy project to button. So if we give that a click, we can then choose to copy this project to our local project library instead, and then hit copy. Then if we just jump back to our local libraries, we now have our demo one and we can just open that up without an internet connection. Make sure we switch back to the proxies because we don't have the camera originals. And now we've got this local project ready to go. Just remember because this is now local, any changes we make won't be reflected in that cloud version. But once you have access, once again, you can just reverse the process from my local click on my icon once again and send it over to the cloud to add a new version to my Blackmagic cloud. Now there's one last thing I want to show you and that's how to just kind of tidy up after yourself once you're done with your projects. So here we are back in the project manager. I've got my demo one project and if I'm done with that, I can right click and then I can simply delete that project. Do I want to proceed? Yes, I do. So we'll hit delete. But what that won't do is delete the media that we've uploaded to the cloud. That will still be in your cloud account and it will still be taking up some of your 500 gigabytes. 
So then you just need to log into your cloud account on the website and delete any media. So from here, I'm gonna do it nice and quick by clicking on go to Blackmagic Cloud. That will take me straight to my project libraries. I need to click on this icon this time at the top, this little purple one, which is our cloud storage. And you can see my project library here, demo. And then I've got this project, demo one. And if we open this up, you can see proxy video. And then I've got all of the proxies which were created and then uploaded. If we go back to the top level, this demo one, if we just give it a click so it's highlighted, the three little dots in the top right hand corner, and then click delete. Permanently delete item. Do you want to do this? Yes, we do. So we're gonna hit delete. And that will give us back all of our 500 gig. So we've got loads of cloud storage ready for our next project. And if you need to delete the proxies you downloaded to your local computer, you just need to go to this folder location that you either set or left as the default. And then within that folder, we'll find another folder with the same name as the project. Mine's called demo one. And then I can simply delete that to delete the proxies from my local machine. Thanks for watching. Take it easy. I'll catch you next time.